It's no doubt that ChatGPT has taken over the world recently, but today we're going to put it to the test and find out just how good it is at children's programming. Alright, so to start, I think I'm just going to ask it for a basic idea for the game. Okay, so it looks like we have to make a game called Space Explorer, where the player controls a spaceship navigating through an asteroid field in outer space. The goal is to collect as many space gems as possible while avoiding collision with asteroids. 2,000 years later. We're gonna ask it if it can write code for this. Okay, so we have all of these. So now, we have to code. Alright, I'm going to make the costumes for the different sprites. It's time for me to add the name. Perfect. Now, I have to code. I'm gonna start with the spaceship, and then I'm gonna work my way up. ChatGPT just wants me to do some basic arrow key movement for the spaceship. Also, um, go to start position. That's not a block, unless you have a sprite named start position. This game is probably gonna turn out very well. Considering that there is no go to start position, I'm just going to make it go to the center of the screen. <laughs> what is this code? No. Okay, this code is so bad. Alright, so here we have the code. You're not going to be able to move up and down because it wants you to move left and right because it uses the move block. I think it's safe to say ChatGPT will not be taking our jobs. So, let's have a look at this. It's also just very, very fast. So I'm gonna build the game like ChatGPT wants me to, and then I'm going to make my own copy and edit it a lot. And we'll see which is better, human or AI. So this is very interesting. I like to see that ChatGPT is trying to use operators even if it's using them very poorly. Instead of using a go to random block, it wants you to set X or Y to random, which is not a drop down boolean times 480 or times 360. I will be using a pick random, but I will use the set X and set Y like ChatGPT once, even if it is absolutely horrible. So now we have the asteroid code and it doesn't work at all. All right, now it's time for the space gem. Okay, so this code looks like it's actually correct. Surprisingly, <laughs> we can't move down, so we can't do anything with it. So now let's do the power up. One power up later. So this game is obviously very, very bad. So we'll just test it out really quickly and then make our own version. So one thing, we can't move up and down. I'm pressing the up and down arrow and the left and right arrow. They all do the same thing. Up is right, down is left. Because they don't use change Y. So that's broken. So we can't do anything. And for some reason the power up. If touching spaceships show, then hide. Wait. I have to check because that that's really funny if that's wrong. I thought the change Y was funny because that was wrong. But if this is like this, that's just awesome. Okay, so I'm checking right now. And it looks like that is what it wants you to do. So you have to hide and then it will show or hide. So now I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to make it my own. Okay, so I've just done this and you're probably wondering, what's MVEL and what's RVEL? Well, this is going to stand for movement velocity and this is going to stand for rotation velocity because I'm going to have it, instead of just like moving left and right and up and down like that, um, spaceships kind of turn in the direction they move. So I'm just going to code up the movement really quickly and I'll get back to you then. Okay, so now I have some basic movement for the ships, although it's not as like floaty as I want it to be because in space there's like no gravity, you know. Alright, that movement isn't really perfected, but it will work for now. So now for the asteroids, actually first I'm going to make a backdrop. Alright, so for the asteroids, I want them to come in from random spots on the screen and I want them to just like drift towards the player but just where the player was at that time. And since that will probably be easy to dodge, I'm gonna have a lot of them at a time. And yeah. All right, so we're just going to delete all of these as well because it's a mess. And I'm gonna code that really quickly. I'm adding a box around the asteroids just so that they actually fully hide when they go into the edges like this. So they don't just clip onto them. That is a bit chaotic, but it should work. 
So now I'm going to code the space gems and power-ups. I've just added a cap to the gem so that you can only have five on the screen at a time. All right, yeah, so it looks like it works. So, so I'm also going to set the score to zero. I'm gonna put the score right here. I'm going to hide the other variables. Actually, I'm gonna add a cool thing for the score. All right, so I just added this for the score. Uh, Griff Patch made a tutorial on how to make this. Okay, the game is almost done. I need to add shields. And I'm probably gonna make the asteroids a little less chaotic. Oh, I also have to make a game over thing. Cause this is actually very hard because the character is also hard to control. But I guess you just have to have skill, I guess. I don't know. All right, I'm gonna check out this code for the shield cause it should work. Okay, so there's the shield. And now it follows the mouse. This game is already turning out a million times better than the AI game. I'm just gonna make it so it points normally when it starts. This game is basically done. I could do a few more things just to polish it, like sound effects. But other than that, this game is done. So yeah, I'm just gonna add some sound effects. So 200 blocks later, and listening to an AI for the original version, my version is now complete. So here it is. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Click the notification bell as well, and I will see you later. Also, if you want to play this game, the link will be in the description. Bye!